Hey, what is up, ladies and gentlemen, Kenneth Hill here, bringing it back to you guys with another Defiance video talking about a decoy build that I just discovered, as well as a little bug that I also found out with decoy, making it completely obsolete and why I thought it was utterly garbage. But before I get into the bug and why I uh, consider this build to suck entirely, let's talk about the build that I have set up here, shall we? So we jump into the loadouts here. You can see I'm using an FRC Assault Carbine. This is the stats in the FRC uh, Assault Carbine. If you want to take a look at it, I'm not really going to go over it. You can just basically pause the video if you want to take a look. As well as the EEC uh, Wildcat pistol that I'm using. And of course, if you're wondering about the stat here and how I got that, this is from the Gunslinger DLC making it uh, give the 20% chance on a full reload to give an overcharge like effect. Of course any other uh, pistol will work, I just decided to have a pistol as my secondary for whatever fucking reason. But now if I drop into the ego grid here you can see I have a multitude of uh, perks locked in and we're going to discuss each and every one of them and why I picked them. Of course I have decoy here because this is based around a decoy build, I maxed that out. Then I also have pumped up, fully reloading a weapon recharge with eco power by 15%, eco power recharge. Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory is that I wanted a faster recharge rate on the decoy when it is down. You reload faster while standing still, 30% reload speed, because when you throw out your decoy, the decoy is tanking everything, you're not going to be having to do a lot of kiting to begin with, so you might as well have the 30% uh, increased reload speed for just standing there to um, in the first place, so just kind of nice. Uh, reduce, reduce the recharge time on decoy, no brainer on that one. Um, then you have, you deal more damage from behind enemies, 15% damage from sucker punch. Now, when you throw out the decoy, um, the targets will end up running to the decoy, so you'll be ending up hitting them from behind to begin with. So it's just a guaranteed 15% increased damage output from the start, which is really nice. Detachment on a kill, you gain a blade of armor for 3 seconds. This is, of course, just more survivability when your decoy is down, as well as fortitude, increase your health, 15% base health, as well as sell your armor, you take less damage. Just all survivability perks to uh, keep you alive when your decoy is down. Not really a big, big deal. Um, energy leech, killing enemy recharges your ego power, 3% power recharge. And then I also have bloodlust, uh, dealing energy damage, any damage, recharge your ego power, cool down by 5 seconds, 3% uh, ego recharge rate. And then I think that was pretty much it. This build focuses around high survivability with actually still being able to maintain a decent um, output of damage, which is pretty damn nice if I do say so myself. Now as you can see here and you're probably wondering yourself why the hell has he not taken any increase in duration perks for this build? Well what I recently found out is that every time I took out um, perks that would well that would increase the duration of my overall decoy it would be thrown out like this and eventually it will show up when it runs to a set point it stops it will start to pull aggro when the aggro gets focused in on the decoy what will happen is the decoy will begin to take damage once the decoy begins to take damage it will eventually die out however because of the increased duration uh, perks that were given to the decoy itself once the decoy dies it still acted as though the ability was still being casted so for example if I threw out the decoy and then the decoy would happen to die before the full duration of the ability actually gave out it would act as though that it was still out so it wouldn't actually recharge so basically that was really making it very very difficult for me to actually be able to use an ability that was supposed to give me multitude of survivability however it just ended up giving me jack shit when I threw it out and it ended up dying in two seconds and I had to wait through the entire duration and then I had to wait uh, for the ability to reset, so it was like a double cooldown, it was like a 30 second cooldown on it, which was ridiculous. For an ability that gave me no damage output, it gave me um, a little bit of positioning, but practically no survivability, because every time I was able to cast it, there was either a bombardment of guys, I was in the wrong area, or I just... the event was over. So, basically... Without taking any perks that increases the duration and just multitude of recharge perks, you're able to consistently have the decoy up to be one of the fastest ego power abilities with the fastest recharge rate, which is absolutely insane, which is really, really nice. You can have the decoy up 
I want to say every 10 seconds or so, not even. I think I'm exaggerating that a little bit. It's probably lower than 10. But what that does is it increases your survivability by a crap ton, as well as your positioning. Because if I throw out the decoy here, as you can see, it's going to eventually spawn and start running to the set location. Let's say... I'm watching the bar down here, you can see that the decoy is about to die or whatever, and you know, I know the minute that decoy dies, I'm going to be screwed over. So when the decoy dies, they're going to instantly switch to me, I'm going to swap my position with the decoy, they're going to run over to the decoy, and I'm going to get to a very, very clear area, allowing me to position myself accordingly. Or, if I want to be fancy with it, i got to wait till it recharges, of course, in order to be fancy with it. But... If I want to be fancy with it, I can throw it on top of this barrel, uh, be fighting down below while the decoy is focused on them, and then what I can do is I can actually swap to this location here right before the decoy dies. Decoy swaps to the other position out in the open field. They switch over to the decoy, and then I'm able to pick them off, and then when they realize that the decoy is just a decoy because it's dead, they'll start okay. gunning for me. And then when they start gunning for me, they're going to realize I'm on top of a crate and I have excellent positioning and there's nothing they can do about it. And of course, I can just rinse, cycle, and repeat that process in a multitude of ways. And it is very, very fun because now I can just swap. And the range on it is, I think it's practically infinite. So I can be pretty damn far away and not really have to worry about anything. And you can see I'm right back in there. And it is an instant cast ability too. And you can see without even me fighting anything, the recharge rate on my uh, cloak is cloak. My recharge rate on my decoy, excuse me, is a lot faster than what it would be normally. Of course, duration is absolute shit, but then again, um, there's no point in increasing the duration. Even the, uh, the ego perk that you see here that increases the overall duration um, of the ability even screws up the ability even more. So anything that involves with increases the duration of your active ego power, do not take for decoy. Any other perk, such as blur, overcharge, or stealth, would work incredibly well. But for some reason, it does not work with decoy. I think the reason being for this, and this is just my hypo oh, excuse me, my hypothesis on the matter would be the fact when you launch out decoy, decoy has its own base set amount of health. Now increasing the duration of this ability will not increase the amount of health the decoy is given. So thus for, um, thus for, I guess you can say, yeah. Once the decoy ends up dying, the duration will actually still be there. The reason that the decoy dies faster than the duration is because of the lack of health that the decoy has. Because, again, the decoy uh, duration increasing ability perks will not increase the overall health for the decoy. So there's health for the decoy, and then there's the duration. Two different entirely things, and apparently that's what screws up the whole... Uh, ability in general. But anyway, enough about me talking about the bug and how exactly it works and this and that. Let's show you some gameplay. I'm going to cut the video here, jump to a part with um, some action. I'll talk about how the build is supposed to be set up and done and exactly how you can go about using this build to make it very fun and Alright, and we are back. We are at a little siege thing or whatever that I found at a minor camp here as you can see. So what is going to be really nice because I can actually show you guys some of the stuff you can do on top of buildings and whatnot if I get on top of a building as you can see here and then throw this decoy out and then activate this panel while this decoy is being targeted and then waste these guys here and then oh Jesus that was stupid but it's okay I have massive amount of survivability so I should be perfectly fine and as I'm doing this, I can continue to burst guys in the face accordingly and be absolutely fine. Now, I don't want to uh, reload just yet because on a full reload, I'm getting it um, an increase in my recharge rate. So you don't want to continuously reload with this weapon unless there's nobody here. Then reload. But uh, while you're fighting, you do not want to reload. You want to just wait until the gun automatically reloads for you, and then you'll get the full recharge. As you can see here, I'm going to throw out the decoy. And with me throwing out the decoy, the decoy is going to about to get focused on. And I can just basically just go about bashing these guys in the face accordingly. And of course, when the... Um, when the... Uh, The decoy is up. You don't. You can reload them because it, the recharge won't affect the uh, the decoy's duration ability. So you can reload as the um, the decoy's out. That's why we took the perk when you're standing still. It increases the overall reload rate. 
Um, and as you can see, in just one second, um, the decoy is going to be up again, which is really, really nice. So now that it's up again, I can throw it out in that direction. You always want to throw it out ridiculously far from you. So that way you can position yourself behind the enemies. And then um, start pumping lead into them. Of course, I'm not executing the uh, the faster reload uh, on uh, standing still. Of course, because I'm always constantly want to be mobile, so that's why I'm not doing that. Um, so it might be better for me to change out that perk, but if that's kind of your playstyle and you can keep that in your memory as opposed to when playing it with this build, it probably will be very, very effective for you. <coughs> oh, excuse me, guys. All right, so we're gonna walk. Uh, we're gonna run up here, I guess, and then jump on this ladder. And then after I jump on this ladder, I'm going to access this panel. And then after accessing this panel, I will probably proc a decoy or get locked in the cutscene because you know that's always fun. I'm watching a black screen and bombs and detonations go off, as I can see that I can't skip this cutscene, which is really really weird. Um, into a loading screen, fabulous. Perhaps again, all the freaking glow. jump cuts that I. Alright, so experts. we're gonna throw in the decoy on the top of the roof. Of course, it can't jump off the roof, which is great. So it won't. It will never be able to run off the roof. So if you you point at the ground and then cast the ability, you'll be able to use the ability accordingly. And God damn it, I'm sucking. What's nice is too, I can actually just use a grenade on that and then swap to the top because it's almost dead. And then they're gonna switch over to the decoy, as you can see there. Or kind of switch over to the decoy, but it's okay. I can kind of go about just popping lead into them down below and just using my overall height to my advantage. And then just continue wailing on them. And I, once again, I'm going to throw a decoy up here and I'm going to go. Eventually, decoy will spawn. Or for some reason didn't actually cast. So we're gonna do it again. Gotta make sure I, you put it in an area they can see it. If you don't put it in an area they can see it, then you're then it's not gonna work. Decoy is probably one of the trickiest abilities to use throughout the game at the moment, um, because it's not a simple ability where you can just cast and be able to go. Okay, so that's how that works, and then just use it like an overcharge or a blur or something like that, uh, or a cloak. Okay, so I'm going to climb up here and activate this computer. And what's nice about this area right now is that I can actually do something really cool. So I'm going to stay up here, and then once my decoy recharges, I'm going to throw my decoy up here, run around on the ground, kill a few people, and then I'm going to teleport back up here when the decoy is almost dead. At least that's the general idea. I'm telling you guys this now because I have a good 50% chance of probably fucking this up. But we're going to see how this plays out to begin with. So as you can see here, they're all going to continuously focus on my decoy. The only reason that this would probably go wrong is if my decoy ends up dead before I end up actually getting back to it. Now as you can see here, I'm starting to take a little bit of damage, but I'm going to swap up here. And then they're going to start attacking my decoy. Now the, the objection... The object of this build is basically can know when to swap with it. If you want to execute the swap as well as the decoy potential to its fullest ability, you want to know when to be able to swap with the ability. Oh shit, I ran out of ammo. That's not good. You want to know when to be able to swap with the ability and just knowing when to basically reposition yourself accordingly. One of the main ways of being able to do this instantly would probably be right before the ability... Um... Not like right right before, but like about a five seconds or so before the ability cancels out on itself. You want to switch. Because then what it will do is it will teleport the ability. It will teleport the, uh, uh, the decoy at the location that you were originally at. Making it so that the decoy will actually have enough time to pull enough aggro for that um, for you to reposition the enemies for you so you can constantly continuously hit them in the back 
Um, see, and I screwed up. If I shot one more bullet out of that chamber right there instead of reloading, I would have got the full reload, and that would have been up two seconds faster. Now, you're probably figuring, oh, it's only two seconds. What the hell big deal is that? Well, two seconds can practically make or break your life and, and uh, dire death situations, especially events. This is more designed for a solo build, in all honesty, not really more of an event build, but you can use it in an event build. It still works very, very effectively. I have used it in a lot of... Um, a lot of... Uh, uh, what you call it? A I can't remember the names. Arcfuls. I've used them in a lot of Arcful events, and it's actually saved a lot of lives. Because I've been able to throw the decoy out, pick people up, or just pull a lot of people away from that, and just being able to position myself accordingly because of it. So you can res people, you can have it pull aggro, you can just you can do a lot with it. The, there's a lot of possibilities that you can do with decoy that makes it so much fun to use and so versatile in a lot of gameplay situations and it really goes with any build that you're kind of trying to do especially if you want a high mobility high survivability build this is very very effective for that of course there are more builds that give you a lot more uh, survivability well not a lot more survivability I should say a lot more um, uh, mobility but uh, we're gonna throw that out real quick and of course, you can just instantly throw it out. You don't have to put it on top of a building or anything like that. You can just instantly throw it out and it would still work the same uh, same way that it would work normally. It would tank aggro and whatnot and just being able to uh, do its job pretty effectively. Of course, putting it on top of a building not only increases the decoy survivability because it can't be targeted so easily as it is right now that it's on the ground, but it also will allow you to position yourself accordingly, like I said, when I teleported on top of the spire a few times or on top of a car or etc making it very very um, versatile for a lot of situations making it also really fun because being able to position yourself in an instant just in a blink is just so freaking good without even having to point to a direction or anything you just literally click the button and bam you're back in an instant not having to worry about oh where am I gonna end up or oh my god is this gonna be bad or anything like that so I cast the ability it's gonna throw out again it can't walk off the uh, off the spire there. I'm going to get the increased damage because of the fact I'm hitting them from the back. So it's an extra 15% damage output. And then I'm going to keep pumping lead into them. Of course, my decoy is about to die. So I'm going to switch back with it. It's going to start continuously pulling aggro. I'm going to fuck up and walk right off onto the ladder and screw up this entire freaking session right now and get completely pulling all the aggro. But that's okay. It takes a lot of practice and you got to get the hang of it. But once you get the hang of it, it becomes really, really fun to do some amazing jukes. And just really, really versatile. And of course, the massive amounts of survivability that I have with this build and the lack of coordination makes it very difficult sometimes to be able to use as I just fell off the spire, as you can see there. But right now, I'm going to just throw out the decoy just because I do need the cover. Um, so I will throw out the decoy and just have the decoy do whatever the hell it's doing and just let it pull the aggro that it needs to be pulling. And then I have enough time to walk over and pick up this MP safe. Thanks. and let him do his job so it's really good for protection missions it's really good for events because it allows you to pick up people allows you to pull aggro and allows you to reposition yourself accordingly and then not to mention some of the talents that you have which increases health which increases your uh, ablative armors or which just basically increases your survivability overall will definitely help in the long run when your decoy is down for those few seconds that it is happens to be down. Of course, the reason that the recharge time right now is so long is because I'm not ending up killing anything, so I don't actually end up getting the full recharge that uh, I would normally get on a lot of uh, from a lot of perks. But since I am killing stuff now, the recharge time is going to be ridiculously fast, so I can just throw that up there once again, and then I can run over here, and then I'll show you guys the ridiculous amount of range that this thing has and is able to teleport on. Not to mention how far it can actually pull the aggro on, um, from these guys, which is just unbelievable. So if I teleport back, bam, I was all the way over there. You can see right there from my decoy at the exact position I was just in and how far I was away from that position. And just how much uh, mobility I just got from just being able to push a simple button and teleport halfway across the map, which is just really, really good. Or halfway across the battlefield, I should say, depending on the type of battlefield you're playing. If I was halfway across the map, then that'd be a different story. But then again, that would be pretty cool, I gotta, I gotta add. I wonder if that works. I doubt it. I'm curious now. We'll have to test that out in maybe a separate video or something, and if it does happen to work, I'll make a video about it. 
But with that being said, let's continue to help these guys out and then just clear this area and then I will probably end the video with that. So let's make it count. Let's throw the decoy right up here and then we're going to wait for it to spawn in a little bit. Of course, you don't have to wait for it to spawn. Uh, I'm going to jump down a little bit and then as I jump down here, you can just start pumping lead into these guys and as you can see I am just doing some really nice damage and then I'm gonna pick off the back line here real quick and swap with me having to swap I can actually just walk right up here and continues to cover this guy as I cleared out the bottom half and now I'm clearing out the front half so these enemies have no support coming in from the bottom because I was able to clear them out and then immediately get right back up here in the long run really really effective Really fun too, being able to just teleport around. And this can actually coexist with a sniper rifle if you wanted to. So if you wanted to have a sniper rifle with this build and just being able to run around and snipe people, um, it becomes very, very <clears throat> strong. Very, very strong with the position. And you can see right there, he was about to attack um, the guy that was planting the bombs, but because I dropped my decoy, it actually prevented him from going in, um, going on the attack on this guy and swapped over to the decoy and started fighting the decoy. So, really, really nice. Really, really nice. Very, very strong for protection missions. I'm really happy the Siege was actually protection cheats because um, it actually got me to show show you guys the full diversity of this build and how exactly it works. So this video might be a little long, but I hope you guys learned a lot about it and basically got a good feel for how the build works and how strong it really can be. But anyway guys, that's pretty much it. My name's Chaotic Engel. If you found this video to be informative, please leave a like. It really helps me out and that's pretty much it. Yeah guys, my name's Chaotic Engel. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, favorite, subscribe, and I hope to see you guys real soon. Later.